Hi folks, welcome back to Tim's Project Car. Today's mission is uh, more distributor work. Um, I'm going to show how to bench measure the um, centrifugal advance um, in case your distributor is out, your motor's not together, whatever. You want to be able to know what your centrifugal is on, you know, a used distributor. Um, I have this old distributor from an Oldsmobile engine and um, it's an old points one, so it's at least 50 years old. And uh, I'm going to set it up in the vise, and I'm going to show how to do that, as well as uh, supply some strategies on how to set up your centrifugal. Um, a lot of times it's popular to uh, limit the uh, centrifugal advance, but I'm going to show you ways around doing that that get you the same result. And uh, also hopefully explain why it's not necessary to lock out a distributor uh, lockout distributors tend to bang on the starters. They're, they're hard on the ring gears. Uh, there are strategies where people will have a separate crank and ignition switch. That way they could get it cranking first. But really all that's not necessary um, if you set your distributor up properly. So today I'm going to explain um, some strategies for doing that. Okay, this here is the distributor set up in the, the vise. So that I can measure the uh, centrifugal advance that it has. Um, I sacrificed the rotor by cutting the backside out so I can access the balance weight and that way I can articulate this. Now the rotor itself, that's your mechanical advance that you have there, but the actual shaft cannot turn because I have it locked. And so what you can do is you can pull the, uh, the balance weight and it moves it out to this line, like, like so. You could do it like this. It does it the same way. Either one. So that shows you how much mechanical advance you have. So now there's a little bit of math you got to do to translate that into a number, but it isn't that much. And um, we'll go on to that in a little bit. Okay, so I put this tape down onto this piece of cardboard so it's flat. Because measuring a curve, you're not going to get a really exact number. So that works out to 300 thousandths. And so I'm going to write that down on the tape here. And then the next step is go to the chalkboard and I will show you the math. Okay, this is added on to the chalkboard I did on a prior video. And um, it, it all pertains. Okay, so. This is how it works. You have your pi of 3.1416. The diameter of the rotor was measured at 3.06, or 3 and a 16th probably. The measured centrifugal was 300 thousandths. The, circum the circumference of the rotor is 9.61. So if you take 3.06, diameter of the rotor, times pi, you get this 9.61. You divide that by 360 and you get 27 thousandths per degree. Okay, 300 thousandths divided by 27 thousandths is 11.11, probably 11, you know, measuring error. The distributor turns half the speed of the crank, so you have to double this. Two times 11.11 is 22.22. .22. So the total centrifugal advance of this distributor is 22 degrees. And so now you know what its maximum potential is. And so before you put it in the car, you know, for instance, if you want 36 degrees total, you'll have to set your curb idle at 14. And um, so this is useful to know. And um, now I'll go on to the next part of the subject. Okay, so as I've determined, it's really not necessary to uh, hack the uh, rotor. At the time, I was thinking it may be more accurate being able to pull directly on the balance weight. But it turns out it you get exactly the same measurement just by doing this. So for those that are doing this at home, you don't need to cut your uh, rotor for anything. Right now, I'm going to take the rotor off and show the uh, weights and the springs. Okay, here's one spring that I've removed. They're 
they're not very large they just go from one pin to the other and they uh, hold the thing from advancing until a certain RPM as you can see with only one spring hooked up they're not uh, necessarily you know this is going to be fully advanced at like 1500 RPMs or something with just one spring I don't know what because I haven't run this distributor I don't know what RPM it reaches full advance that's something that has to be road tested now they make different weight springs and you can in fact run just one spring and it'll work okay depending what you at what rpm you want full advance to occur at okay here are the uh the spring kit that came with my uh Petronics distributor they're the same it's an hei distributor so uh you can get spring kits like this and um they will have differing effects on your timing here's the table that is in my instructions i'm going to copy this down onto the the marker board so i can make it large enough so it's easy to see okay here it is marked out large enough so we can read it so as you can see natural these are these would be the stock springs at 500 rpm the centrifugal isn't working at all at a thousand it's beginning to work and then it slowly works its way up you know 2000 3000 and so on until 6000 it's 21 degrees which is very close to the 22 degrees that we measured in the distributor so you know within within tolerances and measuring error fully advanced at 6000 so the stock one is very very slow and the fully advanced is actually above the stock red line of a 350 the 350 red lines at five and a half technically People always wind them higher than that but uh, you know in my case I put the silver springs in mine and uh, at 500 it's still zero at a thousand it's already eight degrees and at 2,000 and so on at 5,000 it's at 21 and at 6,000 it's at 24 now the Petronix distributor puts out a total of 24 so that's actually would happen once again I have my rev limiter set at five and a half so I might not get my full 38 degrees depending on how accurate the springs are to this chart, right? So copper, they're the ones that are the most aggressive, you know, so if you had a car with a big cam and you want a lot of timing in early, that's the one you would go with, the copper. But you'd have to remember when you're setting your curb idle, um, it's already advancing at 500 RPMs. So if you're setting your curb idle at like seven, 800 RPMs and you set your timing there, you know there's already timing in. That's why you have to rev it up some to get it to fully advance to set your timing, okay? And uh, or else it won't necessarily be, you know, it won't be right because if you're idling a thousand RPMs and you set your, your curb timing at 10, it's actually at negative two. <laughs> And that's where people can be thrown off very easily. So that's why, generally speaking, magazine articles and stuff will tell you to set by total timing. So that way you know. Um, something that you've noticed here, if you have a total of 24 degrees on your um, centrifugal advance, and it's already in eight degrees at 1,000 RPMs, like in this case, there's only uh, 16 degrees left. So that's having the effect of limiting the travel of your centripetal advance because it's already advanced when it's just just above idle. In my case, you know, I might have my idle set at 850 or something. So there it is. And in the case of even the the stock spring, it might be idling a little bit of timing there. Yeah, a little bit of centripetal there. And up here if it's already 12 degrees at a thousand RPMs, you've only got 12 more degrees. It's basically cutting the travel of the centrifugal advance in half. So it's by using the springs, it sort of eliminates the need to mess with the centrifugal advance um, in a mechanical way. You don't have to cut and hack on them. You don't have to put screws in them to limit them or anything like that. Just put the right spring and accommodate for it when you set your curb timing. And um, 
that's why I say personally why do you need to do these things the next question is I'm thinking about a lockout distributor well, if you're putting a lockout distributor, odds are you have a higher stall converter. So if this thing is already putting this much centrifugal advance in at between two and 3,000, and you have a high stall converter, um, when you punch the throttle, it's going to be fully advanced. So why do you need it fully advanced down here and making it buck the starter and fight, fight with the mechanicals of your engine? I mean... I don't really enjoy buying ring gears and starters that much so I would personally I would set my timing and use the copper springs and you know if you have a high stall converter you're gonna have plenty of timing when the converter hits anyway all right so that's where what I'm getting at and I'll show an example uh, I'll write down an example down below and go over that okay here's an example um, using the copper springs and setting your initial timing at 12, okay? Um, at 500 RPM, it would have 16 degrees. So you can start the car and it doesn't buck the starter and everything is great. At 1,000 RPMs, you're already up to 24. Okay, so at 1,000 RPMs, even if you had a stock converter, you have quite a bit of advance. Even at 1,000 RPMs, you have 24 degrees. At 2,000, you have 31 degrees. Once again, that's pretty stout too. But look at this, at 3,000, you're at 36 degrees. You're the same as the lockout distributor at 36 degrees from 3,000 on up. So that, if you got a hot converter in your car, um, what's the difference between doing it this way versus a locked out distributor, other than this way doesn't beat up your starter and ring gear. This is a much better way to go. Um, unless you're doing nostalgia, unless it already exists and you have it, so you might as well drive it. But um, if you have a choice, I would go with the distributor set up properly. And this is why um, I made this video was to explain this point right here. And um, so you can have pretty, very, very aggressive timing without having a lockout distributor. And this is also without having to limit your centrifugals travel. Some people will do that. They'll, they'll uh, limit the travel of the, the weights, but running copper springs has the same effect as doing that because it's already into advance at idle. So there's no reason, there's no reason to mess with your balance weights or any of that stuff. It's, it's pointless to do that. So, Here's the basic gist of it. Um, this is why I did this video because there's a lot of confusion as to what you should do and why. And I think this explains it. Please like and subscribe.